Welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 29, and we're looking at verses 19 to 25. We'll read them and then think on it together. Then you shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram. You shall slaughter the ram and take some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear and on the lobes of his son's right ears and on the thumbs of their right hands and on the big toes of their right feet and sprinkle the rest of the blood around on the altar. Then you shall take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and on his garments and on his sons and on his son's garments with him. So he and his garments shall be consecrated as well as his sons and his son's garments with him. You shall also take the fat from the ram and the fat tail and the fat that covers the entrails and the lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, and the right thigh, for it is a ram of ordination, and one cake of bread, and one cake of bread mixed with oil, and one wafer from the basket of unleavened bread, which is set before the Lord. And you shall put all these in the hands of Aaron, and in the hands of his sons, and shall wave them as a wave offering before the Lord. You shall take them from their hands, and offer them up in smoke on the altar of the burnt offering, for a soothing aroma before the Lord. It is an offering by fire to the Lord." So in the days leading up to this, we've seen some other offerings. And in those cases, the blood was to cleanse the place and the process, but not the person. So now we're seeing offering is given uh, to consecrate the priests. This is going to sanctify the person, the priests. Also, we have here the ram of ordination. This is interesting. This is only done for the clergy. This isn't any other person that ever gets this offering. Another thing that's interesting is that all the other offerings pretty much are done off and on on a continual basis at different things. These offerings are done one time, one time, just one time. Now, there's a series of uh, days that this happens. We'll talk about that. But once it's over, once the priest is consecrated, that's it. There's no more. The priest is consecrated. So these offerings, uh, the offering of ordination happens at this one blob of offerings happens one time. Now, then we have this business about the blood being placed on the lobe of the right ear. Is it the top part or the bottom part? Nobody knows for sure. Uh, also on the thumb of the right hand, and then also on the uh, right big toe. You know, the Bible is not against people who are left-handed, but the right hand is obviously the more common, and so putting it on, on each of these kind of signifies putting it on the whole. And what did this stand for? There's different ideas about what this stands for. Really, of course, with your ear, you should hear the word of the Lord. With your hand, you would be conducting, you would be mediating as a priest, dealing with the things you're doing with the uh, sacrifices, etc., and the feet of the priest should never wander. And so maybe that that's an idea that on the on those, the thumb, the big toe, and so on on the ear. That's to remind the priest, you know, I, I had blood placed on my ear because I I am to hear and do and walk in God's ways. Good for all of us, though, wouldn't it be? To hear and walk and do in God's ways. So remember here, we have sacrifice for the person who's going to be a priest. The sacrifice is slain, the blood is offered, and that's like a life. That life is, is uh, given back to the Lord, given back to the priest, rather given. That offering is given on behalf of the priest to the Lord, and then the, the Lord, when he saves the priest's life, accepts the offering, he is giving that life back to the priest. So that life then is wholly consecrated into the service of God. Then we have this business about the blood sprinkled on the garments, and of course it's the blood. You have to have the blood. It's the blood of Christ that makes any of this uh, matter, and so you have to have it. No matter how small the amount, uh, this is remi reminding us that, that Jesus is all, and he is the ultimate He's the ultimate offering. He's the ultimate high priest. And that's kind of interesting because we have here business about the oil and the blood, and then they're blended together. Remember, though, that the blood is... Blood signifies a life given. Oil does not signify a life given. So uh, blood... It signifies uh, death and replacement. You know, somebody died in my place. That life was given, and life was actually given. And so you have that element there. So the blood is the part that saves. There can be forgiveness through blood. Uh, through the oil, there can be, we can talk about purification, sanctification, but, but the oil doesn't do any of those atoning things. The oil uh, stands for this internal work that happens uh, but the, we're looking more at the blood. The blood has got more emphasis. And Jesus didn't, when they, Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't olive oil that got squeezed out. It was blood that came. So Jesus gave his life signified by his blood for us. The blending of the blood, maybe, you know, it suggests also uh, not only the sacrifice of Christ's life for us, but also the blood, but also the oil signifying uh, that God needs to purify and sanctify. 
at the end of time, you know, there's something called the latter rain that happens at the very end. God pours out his spirit, you know, measurelessly upon his people. And they, they go through the final sequence of, of crazy uh, things that happen at the end. They need, we are going to need all the help that God was ready to give us. And through the Holy Spirit, he gives us that. So again, we have the blood here with the priest and the oil. Interesting pieces as we're looking at the consecration now, right here in this section, the consecration of the priests. We'll say more tomorrow morning as we carry on. God bless you.